This I have endeavored to prove from several places of Scripture, particularly from Jude 3 and Philippians 1 verse 27 in the printed letter to which I refer. But in regard I judge that the controversy betwixt the associate presbytery and the present judicatories turns very much upon this point. I shall, evident, I shall endeavor further to confirm and illustrate the same from the Holy Scriptures as also from the laudable acts and constitutions of this national church agreeable thereto. First, as the key of doctrine is given by the head of the church to every minister who has it commissioned from him, so the keys of government and discipline are given to the office bearers of the church, two or more acting conjunctly. Matthew 18, verses 19 and 20. The right to exercise the keys of government and discipline in the manner appointed by the head of the church belongs to the pastoral office as well as the key of doctrine. And that solemn command given to the office bearers of the church, Acts 20, verse 28, feed the church of God, includes the pastoral rule and government. So much the original word imports, as is very well known. Hence I argue, if the majority in the judicatories of a particular visible church carry on a course of defection from received principles in the manner I have proven the present judicatories are doing, then the minor part, who are grieved with their proceedings, ought to leave them and associate together for the exercise of the keys of government and discipline. Otherwise they give up with the exercise of the keys to the majority who are carrying on the course of defection. That they give up with the keys, in this case, is evident and plain. For the majority must still be reckoned the court, and they only have the keys of government in their hand. And when the minority give up with the keys to the majority in the case mentioned, many gross absurdities follow. As, for instance, they give up the exercise of the keys to such as are perverting the keys of government and discipline, and making use of them to ends and purposes quite contrary to these for which they are appointed by the head of the church. Yea, the minor part, who have not forfeit their claim, give up the government and discipline to such who are by their maladministration, have hic et nunc, or in the present circumstantiate case, forfeit their right to the same, and consequently, by their continued conjunction with them in the judicatories, they support them and strengthen their hands in ruling over the flock of Christ with rigor and in suffering truth to lie wounded and bleeding in the streets without a suitable testimony unto it. Yea, further, the minority, while they continue in conjunction with such judicatories as are obstinately carrying on a course of defection, unwarrantably divest themselves of the above grant of the keys which the head of the church has made unto all such as bear his commission. And they leave the government in the hands of those who are spoiling the vines, and who are wounding and scattering the heritage of God, and at the same time they leave the Lord's flock and people without help and relief, under the oppression and violence that is done them. The truth remains injured and wounded without a judicial testimony unto it, and consequently, by the said conjunction, they strengthen the hands of such as are carrying on a course of backsliding, and therefore become accessory to the guilt that is contracted in the judicatories. The only plausible exception that can be laid against the foresaid argument is that if two or three may, upon alleged affections and backslidings, depart from communion with the judicatories of a church and erect themselves into a distinct judicatory, then order cannot be maintained and the unity of the church cannot be preserved. To which I reply that the secession as it is stated at present from the judicatories is not upon merely alleged defections and backslidings, but upon such backslidings and defections as are justly charged against them, as I have proven in the former sections. If it is urged, who shall be judge in the justness of the charge, or who shall decide the present question betwixt the associate presbytery and the judicatories? I answer that we may appeal unto the word of God, the primary rule and standard, and to our other received subordinate standards of doctrine, worship, government, and discipline. Let these be judge in the case betwixt the present judicatories and the associate presbytery. Let these be judge in the charge that is laid against the judicatories. Let their proceedings and managements in the many particular instances I have given be weighed in the balance of the sanctuary. Let them be tried according to the acts and constitutions of the Church of Scotland agreeable to the Holy Scriptures. The author of the essay who has undertaken the management of their cause against secession from them never, never attempts absolutely to justify any of the instances of the defection and backsliding I have given, though he does what he can to extenuate their sins as I have already observed. I leave it then with the, judicatory, with the judicatories themselves to judge how well he has acquit himself in their defense and how far they are obliged unto him for the service he has done them. 
With respect to the associate presbytery, if they were adopting anything at a point of testimony, which is not founded upon the word of God, and agreeable to our proven acts and constitutions, if they have espoused anything in their testimony as a principle that was never espoused in this national church in her reforming times, the above exception would be a force against the argument would be a force against the argument which I brought for the defense of their presbyterial association. But let all their printed papers, particularly their judicial act and testimony, be searched. It will be found that they have asserted our Presbyterian principles in a full and plain manner, and have likewise asserted the truth from the word of God and our confession of faith in opposition unto many dangerous and pernicious errors of the present times, and the steps of defection which they have condemned, they have found them to be such as are contrary to the word of God, our solemn covenant engagements, and our laudable acts and constitutions. Though the author of the essay discovers his critical talent with abundance of ill humor against the seceding brethren, and though he has stretched himself, as we shall afterwards see, in order to defame and discredit their act and testimony, yet he has not, neither can he, charge them with any principle adopted therein, but what has been received and confessed by the church in her reforming times. There are indeed some few particulars which our author reckons controverted points and which the presbytery have judicially declared to be steps of defection, but our author has not neither has not neither can he plead from any of these which he calls controverted things that the presbytery has adopted anything contrary to our received and approved standards if it is still urged shall a few depart from a great considerable body and shall they take it upon them to emit a judicial act and testimony then let our author and all whose cause he pleads know that numbers give not authority nor weight to a cause of this nature it is only truth that supports a religious cause and therefore though a testimony may be despised on account of the paucity of such as manage it and though it may prove a very popular and amusing argument to disregard a few departing from ecclesiastical communion with judicatories consisting of great numbers yet numbers have not always a testimony for truth on their side this was indeed one of the arguments that the church of rome improved against our reformers but they were told that a testimony for truth may be in the hands of few, even of two witnesses, Revelation 2, verse 3, against a very numerous body who had departed from the truth and simplicity of the gospel. Secondly, all the ministers of the gospel are commanded to take heed to the ministry which they have received in the Lord that they fulfill it, Colossians 4, verse 16. They must likewise teach the church to observe all things whatsoever her exalted head hath commanded, Matthew 28, verse 19. They are also charged to commit the ministerial truth unto faithful men, 2 Timothy 2, verse 2. Hence I argue that such is the state of matters in the present judicatories, that all who would make conscious of, their du of the duties unto which they are obliged by the above and like scripture commands that might be mentioned, ought to depart from communion with them and associate themselves in a distinct capacity from them, in order to the exercise of the keys of government and discipline. In regard, they cannot... In regard they cannot, while they continue in a conjunction with them, discharge many of the duties they are called unto, and which the state of matters in the Church of Scotland at present requires. I gave some instances in the close of the preceding section to events that a conjunction with the present judicatories restrain, restrains and binds up such ministers as are sensible of their duty, and desire to discharge the same from the performance of some particular duties, which the command of the head of the church, their pastoral office, and the present state of the heritage and flock of Christ do oblige them unto. I shall here give some instances of some particular duties that ought to be discharged, which cannot be done, unless such who are sensible of their duty, and who are grieved with the present proceedings of the judicatories, associate together for the exercise of government and discipline in a distinct capacity from them. Number one, or first, excuse me, if the office bearers of the church, particularly the ministers of the gospel, would fulfill that ministry which they have received of the Lord, they ought not only doctrinally to declare the truths of Christ, but also judicially assert them in opposition unto the particular errors by which they are subverted in the times and places wherein they live. This I hope I have fully proven already, and I do not think the author of the essay would refuse it. But the present judicatories of this national church do obstinately decline judicially to assert the truths in direct and express opposition unto many dangerous and pernicious errors that have been vented amongst us. And consequently, they refuse to fulfill that ministry which they have received of the Lord. Therefore, I conclude that such who are sensible of their duty and who are grieved with the injury that is done to truth 
ought to associate together and in the name and authority of the head of the church display the banner of a judicial testimony for injured truth by condemning particularly and expressly such erroneous propositions or principles whereby the truths of God have been openly and wickedly opposed and undermined, and by asserting the truth in direct opposition unto such gross and dangerous errors whereby the truths of God have been subverted amongst us. The author of the essay cannot refuse that the judicatories have declined a suitable testimony for truth, for he wishes that he, for he wishes there were an asseratory act and prof professes to regret the omission of judicatories in this matter. Though, as we have already observed, he extenuates their sin and makes but a very small account of such omissions, though yet they are such as involve the judicatories in the guilt of supporting and countenancing many dangerous errors, yea, they are such as are not only prejudicial to the present generation, but also to the souls of posterity. If, then, these culpable and dangerous omissions of the judicatories are duly considered, how shall justice be done to truth? How shall the banner of a judicial testimony against error be displayed? How shall the redeemer have the ravine of honor, uh, the revenue, excuse me, of honor and glory which all the churches owe unto him, namely a public and judicial confession of the truths in opposition to the injuries and indignities that are done them? How shall ministers fulfill their ministry unless they depart from conjunction with such judicatories as decline to discharge this duty and associate together that they make a joint public and judicial confession of the truth in opposition unto dangerous and pernicious errors whereby the truth is opposed or subverted? Secondly, if ministers would fulfill their ministry, they ought to set the trumpet to their mouths and to show unto the Lord's professing people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. Isaiah 58. 8 verse 1 It is not enough that sin is doctrinally declared it ought also be to it ought also to be judicially condemned but we cannot expect that the present judicatories will condemn particularly the backslidings and defections of former times when they refuse to acknowledge and condemn the sinful steps that they themselves have taken as for instance that act of assembly 1732 whereby the rights and privileges of Christ's subjects in choosing and calling of their own ministers were delivered up even to the declared enemies of our Presbyterian constitution it was repealed because it was passed contrary to some rules directing after what manner acts of general concern should be concluded but it was never condemned as contrary to the word of God and the laudable acts and constitutions of this church, directing how ministers ought to be called and chosen. Yea, the present judicatories are so far from acknowledging and condemning violent intrusions that they are carried on with an high hand to this very day. Likewise, of late, the Sabbath of the Lord was profaned and the immediate subordination of the courts of Christ's spiritual kingdom to the Lord Jesus, the alone head and king of Zion, was practically given up by ministers their reading from the pulpit the act of Parliament, Annette Captain John Porteous. It cannot be expected that the present judicatories will condemn this deed, whereby the headship and sovereignty of Christ over the courts of his own house was invaded and his holy day profaned, when the most part of the ministers of this church have read the said act in one shape or another. Therefore, since a judicial testimony against public sins and steps of defection cannot be obtained from the present judicatories, it is necessary that such ministers who are aggrieved with their proceedings and who desire to discharge their duties uh, the duties of their ministerial office should come out from among them and associate together in distinct judicatories that they may, according to the power and authority which they have received from the Lord Jesus, condemn particularly our public sins and backslidings from the Lord, and that they may humble themselves for these before him, and also that they may call all ranks of persons in the land of repentance and humiliation for the iniquities of the present generation and for the sins of our fathers. Conform to the scripture pattern and example, Psalm 106 and Psalm 78. Thirdly, it is the duty of the ministers of the gospel to feed the, the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood, and to commit the ministerial trust to faithful men according to the Lord's express command in his own word. Acts 20, verse 28, John 16, verse 15 and 16, and 2 Timothy 2, verse 2.